Flower Man of Yosemite, Arthur C. Pillsbury, was a visionary who used science, technology, and film to change the way people see the world. Even today, when his name has been almost forgotten, his influence is still felt. Born in 1870, Pillsbury studied mechanical engineering at Stanford. To pay his tuition, he ran two businesses, a bicycle shop and a photography studio. His senior project in 1897 was the first circuit panorama camera, a project his professor said would not work. In January of 1898, he took his camera to Alaska. There, he photographed native Alaskans at a time when they were experiencing tremendous changes impacting their way of life. The next year, in a journey of 2,600 miles from the headwaters of the Yukon River to the ocean, he took hundreds of photos recording the gold rush arriving in newly founded Nome just before the onset of winter. In March 1906, Pillsbury left the San Francisco Examiner to start the Pillsbury Picture Company. The next month, he was shaken out of bed by the San Francisco earthquake. Grabbing his cameras, he raced to the city, capturing fleeting images as shattered buildings disappeared in flames. Pillsbury used his profits to fulfill his long wish for a studio in Yosemite, a place he first visited in 1895. On the porch of the Three Arrows in 1909, Pillsbury began his campaign to awaken Americans to the world of nature, showing films of Yosemite's wonders and its wildflowers. His films stunned the viewer with the mystic beauties of vaulted walls of stone cloaked in mist as waters surged over cliffs into the glacial valley filled with life. In 1911, John Muir chose Pillsbury's photos for his book, The Yosemite, even as he continued his battle to save the Hetch Hetchy, the other Yosemite, from destruction. In 1912, Pillsbury took viewers further into the world of the wildflowers using his newly invented lapse time camera. Tourists saw flowers flitting, dancing, shaking their heads, jostling each other in their struggle to survive and bring forth new life. So similar, Pillsbury said, to our own struggles. Both Pillsbury and Muir were preservationists understanding the integral relations of living things. When Muir died in 1914, Pillsbury's campaign continued. In 1915, as the newly formed Park Service planned for elite resorts and golf courses, Pillsbury continued his campaign to connect Americans to the natural world through film. In 1919, Pillsbury took to the air so people could experience with him the absolute magnificence of Yosemite. Moved by films of haunting beauty and power, people began to see. President Coolidge and his wife heard Pillsbury at a small dinner given in the President's honor in 1926. Both were impressed. In 1927, Pillsbury took people a step further into the world of the cell with his invention of the microscopic motion picture camera. Scientists were speechless. Pillsbury's presentations extended the edge of known science through human sight. More people journeyed to Yosemite, experiencing these insights at the new studio, frequently overflowing its 250-person seating. Then, in November of 1927, a fire, never explained, destroyed both Pillsbury's theater in Yosemite and a lifetime's work in negatives. Pillsbury was forced out of the national parks. He did not give up. Over his remaining years, he built the first underwater camera, 
made the movie in Pango Pango and built the first x-ray motion picture camera extending human vision in every direction while refusing to patent making his inventions available to all. Knowing his name did not matter. <laughs>